All right, hello. This is the first video of the series of how to build an AR Ring Pro. This is uh, both a review and a build tutorial where I'm going to show you everything I do from scratch, uh, building this plane, uh, flying it, building INAV. We're going to use an ELRS uh, transmitter with a T16X um, radio controller. Now uh, let's take a look into this AR Wing Pro. So this is a one meter uh, long drone, flying wing. It has brilliant build quality. It has a lot of room from, for components. In case you're new to this uh, uh, RC thing with flying drones, this, it's important for you to understand that there are a lot of drones on the market. More, moreover, there are a lot of drones that can be customized and each drone has their own pros, pros and cons, right? Um, what I'm going to present to you is AR Wing Pro. I've left a link in the description of the video of, uh, on Banggood, so you can purchase it. I bought it in Europe, and uh, the shipping, I think, was around a week or so. Let's look at what this wing can do, basically. Let's see what's in the package. So, in the package, you will get two wings, the center console, the two servos, 9-gram servos. I think they are metal geared. Um, you're also going to get these 3D printed plastic things to attach to, the, to your Elgons. Some decals, some of which I, uh, I already uh, stick to, to, to the wing. You're going to get two types of doors for the main compartment in the middle here. You're going to get the generic one, which is uh, which has a big uh, intake of airflow here on the bottom. And you're also going to get a DJI FPV one, which is um, uh, built around the FPV uh, system from DJI, where you have the slot to place the, the transmitter here and two airflow gaps uh, next to it. These doors come with very powerful magnets, so they attach really quickly and really sturdy to the base. Uh, pretty loud. Um, let's look at what the wing can do. So the wing is built from very uh, sturdy foam. It's both flexible and sturdy, so I would be pretty comfortable flying this as a beginner. Uh, you don't really have to worry about breaking it from um, you know, just hard landings, it's gonna survive. I think that I saw a video on YouTube of somebody just uh, uh, flying it into a fence and it survived very really well. So it's a very sturdy drone. It comes with, uh, P it comes in two versions. There's a PNP and a kit. Uh, the PNP or plug and play um, comes with two servos. As I, as I told you, nine grams metal gear servos. It comes with a sunny sky. Um, 1400 kpv, uh, kv, I'm sorry, which is a really good, decent engine for this size of drone. It will fly it up to 1.4 kilograms, I think. I've seen people flying it with well over 1.8 kilograms, so you're safe. You, whatever battery you choose, I think it's gonna fly it with, with no problem, with a, with a stock um, uh, brushless motor. What else do we have? We have a battery strap. In the main compartment here, we have the beautiful uh, wing cable connectors where the wings connect to the base. There's a six pin connector, which allows you, I'm going to show you on the bottom of the plane, allows you to connect the servos in one of the three uh, pin cables. And you also have three pin cables free for any other equipment you want to place on the wing because there's compartments on the bottom of the plane as well. On, on the front side, you have this huge compartment where you can put your battery, again with a strap. You can also put in your flight controller, you can put in your VTX in this main, con main compartment as well because it's pretty hefty. Uh, it's a lot of room to work with. And because of the beautiful intake airflow from the, from the generic door here, uh, everything is going to be cooled down. You don't have to worry about the airflow or cooling especially when you use your VDX in the main compartment, although I don't recommend it, but if you, if you choose to do it, you don't have to worry about te high temperatures. You also have two compartments on the left and on the right here. They're symmetrical. They're pretty big and allow you to put in any equipment of your choice. Um, probably a, an Arix T, T or rather, yeah, an Arix uh, trans, uh, receiver here and a VTX in the other place. These two have their own ventilation channels with intake and outtake on the, on the back. 
Um, you, so you can also bring in the antenna, bring out the antenna through here because this is the top of the plane. You also have a, a back door. So let me put in the put in the uh, cap here. You have a compartment on the back as well, where is the kit? Uh, sorry, the plug and play version it comes with a 40 amp BSC. Without telemetry, it has the BC of five volts, I think. Um, and here, there's again some room for your equipment. You're probably going to want to put your flight controllers here because of the uh, CGs on the plane. I'm going to show you on the on the back of it because it's pretty uh, back heavy. So you're going to have to put a hefty battery and some, I think, some lead here on the on the on the, on the top. So 40 amp ESC, um, triple connector to the brushless motor, magnetic door uh, with a GPS slot here. You have a plastic case on it, so cap on it, so you, your GPS won't get muddy. But you can put your GPS on the top and you have a place, um, a hole here to get your cable out and into your flight controller or whatever you put on the back compartment. Also, the two compartments com uh, communicate with the channel in the middle, so it's pretty easy for you to um, to connect the two compartments together through through wires. All right. So what else? It comes with one five-inch propeller. I would uh, strongly recommend purchasing more of these. These are um, pre-balanced. If you buy them from Sonic Level, which I recommend because you don't want an unbalanced propeller on this engine because it's gonna wiggle a lot. And if you plan to have a FPV camera, it's really gonna impact the flight performance. On the top here, uh, on the tip of the plane, you have a compartment where you can put in your FPV camera, uh, very handy. And you have also a, a top plate where you can put your action camera, either like run cam, GoPro session, GoPro Hero 5, 6, I will fit in there with no problem. You also have some straps uh, so you can fix the camera in place and secure it there. All right, then we have the Elevon connectors here with, the, with this uh, rod. Uh, it's, they're connected to your servos on the bottom of the plane and they're really, really sturdy and adjustable as well. So if you want a mechanical offset, you can really easily configure it with these rods here. Um, all right, let's take a look at the bottom of the plane. Here things get more boring but interesting at the same time. So it comes with three Teflon stickers that you can stick to some predefined placeholders on the bottom so your landings won't affect the structure of the plane. However, it's not going to suffer either way, but it's nice that they include this. Um, then you have the cutouts for the servos and the cutout for the cable of the servo, a channel here that you can use to uh, stick your cable in and then maybe hot glue it or uh, using some, uh, some tape to, to hold it in place. You also have the three pin connector of each servos that have a three pin connector that connects inside that I show you, showed you. One of the cables inside will, will be connected to this one, same on the other wing. And you also have another compartment here that's covered with a foam box at the moment because I, won't, I probably won't be using it with another huge channel to connect to the other three pin output or input here. So pretty, pretty nice design. I really enjoy it. Here's your CG markers so that you can uh, balance your plane, which I strongly recommend. And again, this is pretty bottom heavy, so you need to stick a lot of weight on the top of the plane for the CG to actually work. And it also comes with some wingtips. So these are the wingtips. I haven't mounted them yet because the other electronics aren't, haven't been delivered. But you have two wingtips for the two wings, naturally. Uh, it's going to provide stability, they're really easy to, to assemble, they're practical and um, pretty high quality foam here. Also, most of the elements are hardened with uh, plywood, so your the plane structure is held together by plywood, which is a nice feature to have uh, rather than having the foam uh, by itself constructed by a frame of the plane. Okay, what else do you get in the back? You also get some tips. Um, you have two, by default, it comes with two kind of tips. This one, which doesn't have a hole for your FPV gear, um, which you can, which has actually some room for lead, so you can balance the plane. Uh, Sonic Model has really thought through this because it's important to stick in some weight here so that you balance the plane again. 
So this is the normal one and you have uh, another tip that has a cutout for your FPV camera or your action camera. Um, it doesn't have a lot of room inside, but uh, I think it can be used if you want to place the FPV camera within here. Otherwise, you can use your GoPro or Run Cam directly on that plywood in the, in the top of the plane and uh, secure it with a strap. And that would also work. Um, the problem with that being that your camera won't be protected from hard landing. So keep that in mind before placing a, you know, a $500 camera on top. What the plan is with this plane is to show you guys, I mean, the assembly that I've done until now, it was pretty basic. I just stick the wings to the base. They have a screw connector. I also mounted the servos, but I'm gonna unmount them when the flight controllers come in because I will need to test it first. So I'm gonna take you through the whole process. Then I'm gonna use an F722WPX uh, Matek flight controller with two cameras. Uh, because I also have two, uh, two different FPV cameras. I plan to use one in the, in, the, in the tip of the plane that looks forward and one on the bottom of the plane that looks downwards uh, for some nice FPV footage. Um, and what else? I, ah, I also have this um, uh, Zop Power lithium polymer battery, which is 6,000 milliamp, I think. Uh, yeah, 6,000 milliamp hours and 14.8 volts at 35C. I've heard mixed reviews for this battery, but I'm gonna try to use it for, for the beginning in a long range attempt, maybe 15 kilometers. And I also order a LiPo 6000 mAh battery, which is way smaller than this huge brick. And it also has, um, you know, the potential of being stretched fully and not, uh, not uh, dying on you. Both this and the, and the, and the Lion battery are 4S, and um, it, they provide enough power for the engine. You don't need a lot of voltage or rather a lot of amps for flying wings. If you're coming from drones, this is important to note. For drones, you need a, a high current output, while for flying wings, because you only have one motor and because the, um, uh, the five inch propeller is pretty huge, it's gonna provide enough lift for you to fly for a long time, but we're gonna talk about this and we're gonna of course do a long range attempt once the other electronics come in. All right, the receiver and transmitter. I, I mentioned the T16S X uh, transmitter from Eshin. I didn't order the Radio Master one because I like the Eshin features more. With ELRS, we're gonna try the European bandwidth, the 876 megahertz, I think. Um, maybe I'm wrong. With a nano receiver with a T dipole antenna which I'm gonna mount on one of the compartments here, and um, an A2 something ultimate receiver uh, via VTX, which should output 1.2 vo uh, watts. And that would hopefully give us enough range to drain a battery at least. This should hold, the 6000 milliamp LiPo battery should hold for about 80 minutes. The uh, lithium ion battery should hold a bit more than that, but we're gonna see from our tests. From other reviewers, I've, I've heard, I've seen that this swing is pretty optimized for long range. We're gonna test it out. Um, so yeah, uh, see you in the next video of the channel. And the next video will be uploaded once the electronics come in, the GPS with compass, the uh, flight controller, the battery, the um, TX module. And we're gonna flash the ULRS farmer. We're gonna flash INAP on the flight controller together. We're gonna set it up for auto launch. And hopefully we're gonna have a series because I'm a developer at heart that a, a series when we implement auto landing from scratch through INAV. So it's gonna be a hurdle. I'm gonna clone INAV um, firmware on my computer. We're gonna to work together on an auto land feature that actually works and we're gonna fly with it and see how it goes. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, this is the first video of the series. Um, don't, don't forget to subscribe and share to your friends that are uh, passionate about RC planes and drones and see you in the next one. Cheers.